All right, guys, welcome back to the ESP Shock Therapy Cup here from our uh, work in progress studio here. Oh, no, this is, this is our final form. Our, our final form here. This is our new backdrop. Uh, welcome to Los Angeles. <laughs> Coming up next, guys, we've got eHug versus Speed Gaming, another best of one. And the winner of this will be playing a best of three against Sad Boys, who, of course, won our first best of one today. And that's coming up right after this match. So mm -hmm. stay tuned here, guys. we got like four, hopefully four or five hours of games coming our yeah, way. Yeah, a lot of Dota. So eHug versus Speed. This is going to be an interesting matchup. We haven't seen a lot out of eHug, of course, that new yeah. North American team, sort of uh, the Pretty Boy Swag, three members of right. the original roster. And now they have MSS and uh, Pandago. We struggle with that name a little bit. Pandago. Yeah, it's it's a Pandago. Because I, I wanted to just be like Panda, but it's yeah, Panda Ego is how I see Panda it Ego the instead of Pandago. <laughs> it does he have a big ego? Like a I don't, I don't, ego. I don't know. Panda I want to see some well. Brewmaster, um, but we've only seen them once. They played top five. They went two zero. It was a pretty uh, convincing series. Yeah. Um, so sky's the limit. Hopefully they do well against speed, but they're gonna have their work cut out for them. I mean, they their sponsorship is pretty legit. It's actually better than uh, at least from what we know of it when it was announced. It's mm -hmm. better than a lot of other Western teams, even like Premier teams. So yeah, without naming any names, but uh, <laughs> they've got lots of proof here. I imagine some of those top teams might you know have them in their crosshairs. It's like you guys don't deserve this. Yeah, and we're gonna show you. So. Best of ones are always scary. Anything can happen in a best yeah, of one. Yeah, that's really so, true. Uh, you, you know, even speed. They're obviously the heavy favorites coming in here, but in a best of one anything can happen he heavy favorites they, they are very heavy favorites to be totally honest like odds 80 20 i think that's about right i that i would not fair. go higher than 80 20 unless it's like a korean like tier 2 team against like dk navi alliance generally because yeah especially the best of one because anything can happen even when you're using your full roster maybe somebody's really hung over you know maybe <laughs> like someone's girlfriend is on the phone with them all game and they're just yelling at each other so you never know the things that we don't know right so, all right, let's get into this draft, guys. It is underway. So, uh, Speed going to start us off. First pick, Visage. Team Ehug going to go Elder Titan Alchemist to open things off. So, Alchemist going to have another showing here, despite uh, his uh, sort of lackluster performance in our first game today. We talked about that quite a bit. Hopefully, he fares a little bit better here. Yeah, looking at the changes for him in 6.80. Base movement speed reduced by 5. It's a big deal for support in the laning stage, especially, because Vesage generally known for his strong laning stage. Of course, the familiars are really good later on, too. But having lower move speed, easier to get caught. And like if that first Frostbite or, or Frost Nova rather hits you, that Gale hits you, you're just going to die. So move speed changes can be deceptively strong. And I think this could hurt him quite a bit in the laning stage. But mid-game, I mean, he's still got familiars. He's still a siege tank in terms of just being able to like blast you from afar <laughs> with soul assumption. So I think Visage is still a strong hero. How strong, I guess, remains to be seen. But yeah. in speed gaming's hands, generally when we see this team play, they like to run greedier drafts. They we we see them doing a lot more of like split pushing, dual cores, uh, aggressive like uh, non team fight builds. Like Envy often won't go BKB early. He'll just go straight into like Helm of the Dominator Yasha. We saw Eternal Envy doing a, the similar build uh, when he was sitting in for Fnatic at D2L. So Speed like to play greedy. E Hug are drafting towards what looks to be more of a five man slash team fight lineup with Elder Titan Alk early. Uh, we'll have to see how they kind of settle their draft. It's still open ended, but this is an interesting ban. This is a very interesting ban. Speed gave me ban out. Faceless Void, who got some buffs in this patch, but... Interesting buffs. Interesting. Sort of, I, I put it in a similar category to that Bloodseeker change uh, in 6.79, where it's really cool, and at first glance you go, wow, that's really crazy, how are we going to stop him? And then it doesn't really translate to fixing the core problems of that hero as a carry. Yeah, so in Chronosphere, the cooldown got reduced at the higher levels, but not at level 1. At level 1, it's still 2 minutes. It scales all the way down to 80 seconds. So I think late game, that's a massive deal because when you have an 80 second Chronosphere, you could just use it for solo kills exclusively because by the time you get a solo kill on anyone who's not like a useless support at that stage of the game, and by the time that hero respawns, you basically will have Chronosphere ready again. So that's a big change later on. Uh, time walk mana cost reduced from 120 to 90 is okay, but generally you don't have too many pro mana problems on Void, especially if you go treads and get like a magic stick and just tread switch. Uh, normally mana is not an issue. Uh, maybe it means he can be a little more aggressive in the laning stage. But the most interesting change is a thousand movement speed and phase while you're in Chronosphere. So basically, what this means is, like sometimes when you're playing Faceless Void, you just get kind of caught in traffic. Like there's yeah. a bunch of stuff in the sphere, and you want to get to the high priority target. So being able to phase through everything and move really fast means you can like instantly go for the high priority target, and that could be a big deal. Like 
uh, if, especially if you're getting those double damage bashes, uh, which was changed a few patches ago. That might be right. the difference between getting a kill and not. But we're theory crafting, or I'm theory crafting a lot for here. They got banned, so <laughs> I'll leave it at that. I think he's. I think Void could be like a situational carry pick. He's yeah. really strong with Lich and Ancient Apparition. That used to be a really popular trio. You chrono, you unload a Chain Frost, A drops an Ice Blast, and everyone dies. But right. uh, still, I don't see him as like a, a carry that will ever get banned in the first stage. But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, we'll see. Speed sticking with what These they know. Uh, shout out to k Toasis, our stats guy. Not doing our stats today, but he did give us a couple of statistics to play with. A few teasers. And uh, in 6.79 speed gaming, or 17-4 and four with Visage, and 12-3. and three with Luna. So they're sticking with what they know, two heroes that uh, they've run quite a bit in 6.79 and obviously they've been very successful with. The other uh, highlight statistic we have is uh, Sing Sing's Marana. He has gone 20 and 6 and uh, not banned here. I don't know how well Marana would fit into a Visit Radiant Luna team pick. Uh, opener, but still a possibility if they wanted to grab uh, that classic Sing Sing hero as they say, uh, shoot arrow, hit arrow, win game. Is that how it goes, LD? Yeah, shoot arrow, hit arrow, and then the rest is all Shiro. Was not was not changed directly in this patch at all. So a strong here in the last patch, and should continue to be a strong one here as well. Uh, I don't really see any the item changes like Rina Vakila being a bit stronger gives you three extra agility is nice for Murana. So there's some indirect like Five I'd say minor remaining. buffs, but nothing of huge significance. And Eha gonna go ahead and third pick Dazzle. So Reset they are indeed time. setting up for some team fight. Dazzle pairs so well with that Elder Titan, the Natural Order paired with the Weave. And those 5v5 teamfights, if you can catch at least three or four of the opposition in that Weave, very quickly you'll see them start to melt under the pressure. And of course, Alchemist will be there for that Acid Spray for a little bit of additional minus armor. Uh, already setting up for a lot of synergy, but is, is this Dazzle's patch, LD? I mean, we're two for two here. Is, is this the time for Dazzle? Uh, guys, by the way, we are hearing you as far as the volume issue, so I we've tried turning me down and Zyori up a little bit. Uh, let us know if that fixes it. I do tend to. Do I just need to be louder here? Do I need to enunciate better? Uh, maybe project a little more. Project but a little more. All right. We'll we'll see if uh, we'll see if it gets better in two minutes. Uh, if it doesn't, just let us know, and we'll try and get it sorted out. So, uh, yeah, Dazzle, Elder Titan, Alchemist, really strong minus armor lineup, really strong team fight lineup. Like you said, Weave is very scary paired with the Elder Titan Aura, which removes uh, a shitload of base armor. So. That combo could be devastating in team fights. Uh, what I'm curious about is how the lanes are going to develop for them. Probably an offlane Elder Titan. I guess a solo mid Dazzle, because generally the NA Dota team, uh, our scene tends to be really trendy. So if we're seeing uh, Sad Boys running it, then I won't be surprised at all to see E Hug running it as well. But uh, looking at what the teams need right now, E Hug have their offlaner. They've got at least one support and probably a solo mid, so they'll need. A uh, safe lane farmer, uh, as well, or rather a carry hero, as well as a secondary support. So, is there any potential for a position one alchemist here? That dazzle alchemist duo lane can be pretty potent if matched up against another duo lane. But it looks like speed will probably be looking for a try. Speed here. might just if they do that, Ten speed can just kind of dodge it. And yeah. uh, yeah. trading alk for Luna farm is okay. okay. With the coddle, it might actually Yeah, I, now now it does look like either it's maybe solo mid. Uh, or solo mid. Or true. solo mid or one position alchemist. So it is... The the main thing here is that, well, well generally the Luna's going to push the tier 1 earlier than the alchemist uh, because she gives a lot more damage to her team so they can bring right. the tower down quickly. But e can clear waves fast, so both teams could go for an early tier 1 tower push. And, uh... Well, Ehug, look at their draft. They have one stun of any note, and that's Unstable Concoction. So they go for the EE -E Storm, EE -E Sama Storm. Could be very strong this game. Uh, or actually, no, so I guess EE -E will be on the Luna. So this is potentially a Sing Sing Storm. Yeah. Which I, I don't, I can't remember the last time I've seen him play it outside of pubs. I, I, I have not seen it recently either. I'm I know he has before, but just not too much recently. I'm still a little bit caught up on this Keeper of the Light pick here. I, I think you hit the nail on the head with uh, the lack of crowd controls that Team Hawk have. They basically have uh, Earth Splitter and Unstable Concoction. I guess you could count Poison Touch, but how do you like Coddle right now? Are you a fan of the old Keeper of the Light? Ten seconds. Teams just go for a lot of early ganks. and The problem with Coddle is that he puts no Five direct pressure on enemy heroes. Like You're not going to go gank mid with Coddle, right? Right. So he's not really good at punishing time. greedy solo mids like Storm Spirit. His best asset is just being really efficient in the jungle. But the jungle for supports that can't uh, like properly jungle. I mean, he can stack the big camp and eventually clear it, but 
that's a very inactive support, and when you see that kind of support, you just know he's not going to do anything else around the map. So, like, if you pick Chen, you can AFK farm the jungle, but you can also right. smoke uh, and actually look to get aggressive. Uh, so the t other enemy team has to be worried about it, whereas in this case, they they have no fear of any pressure from E-Hug. So I think speed can... Re like, the Storm is the perfect way to punish it. You've no no real lockdown for our, a hero like Storm. Well, we're going to pick him. And then we have Luna as well. So maybe maybe they managed to kill the, the Storm, but definitely the Luna will free farm. And it will be a Ravens Magnus. So I guess it is going to be a farming Alk, I want to say. Yeah, I think I it will be farming Alk. No other way to lane it, really. Both Magnus and Elder Titan kind of need those solo lanes. And it looks like we may not have fixed our volume issues quite yet, LD. Which is... I feel like I'm not that much more quiet than you in real life, which is making me suspicious about this mm -hmm. giant mixer we have. <laughs> Alright, we'll try and get it sorted out. <laughs> and uh, you just keep on talking while I work on that. Ten so, uh, there it is. Batrider going to be the final pick for speed. Uh, and that makes this... Uh, Interesting lineup here. Is that going to be uh, okay? So a sing sing storm. Oh, you here. know what it is? I got the mics mixed up. I was making you quieter. Oh, <laughs> LD, you silly goose! You made it worse. Yeah, I was making it worse. Uh oh. Whoops. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if that's better. Hashtag work in progress. Yeah. All right. Hashtag dedication. Hashtag hard work. Hashtag up all night plugging in cables. Yeah. So Batrider, the final pick here for speed, uh, which is an interesting addition. I, I wonder how they're going to lane this exactly. Who is going to be their offlaner, or is uh, there going to be, be no offlaner? Should be seven bat offlane, and, the, and then, what, they're, what we're probably going to see speed do, I want to say, is just abuse the ES offlane and just keep on fissure blocking the creeps. Oh, okay. Uh, which I didn't really catch that much in the first game, but they were doing that a lot uh, for sad boys. Five so expect probably dual lanes here: Luna, Visage, safe lane. Maybe the Visage or ES looks done once they establish the lanes, and then store mid, uh, and the bat sh maybe starts jungle, but with boots first, probably... Well, it could be either way. You can go to the jungle early on, but the woods is a little bit suspect for bat, unless he s just focuses on these three camps here, uh, which is greedy, because you're more vulnerable to being ganked, right? generally, as opposed to like old s what bat used to do was he'd always farm these two camps, but... The medium camp's risky now because uh, it can spawn mud, mud golems, golems and you can't kill them. Those uh, pesky mud golems. But I don't think Eha can really. They could contest his jungle though. So if Bone Seven's actually, if they go aggressive tri lane, he should just head to the off lane here because they can just keep on blasting the creeps and stealing his experience with Coddle. Yeah. Well, we'll see how they want to lane it. Right now, Ehug have all five down in the bottom, so it looks like they could do a bit of an aggressive tri lane here and um, let Alchemist soak up that farm. It's sort of an, in a funky tri-lane with Dazzle and Keeper of the Light. It just makes me a little bit nervous, their lack of stuns, lack of crowd controls. I mean, Dazzle does help out quite a bit with the Shadow Wave and the Shallow Grave if they get aggressive, but uh, th this is just a, a, a weird tri-lane. It could work it's out well pretty, with Keeper pretty, of the Light. It's pretty but, strong, though, and this yeah. could be first blood. Oh, uh, he didn't channel the stun for very long. Yeah. Pi yeah. Lie die, gonna throw a Fissure, gonna catch all three, and Pi will survive. Yeah, I guess MSS afraid that they'd get fogged and that he'd stun himself, maybe a, a turn yeah, around. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to play of. it safe here to start things off. The and the rune is about to spawn. Who's going to get it? Well, it will definitely be our Dire Squad and Man Daker will be e -hug. So, e -hug's tri lane is not particular. They're decent at killing, but what they're really good at is just pushing the wave and like Zone. winning the farm war in your jungle. So, if, if Speed Gaming is doing a lot of pulling... I mean, between Acid Spray, Illuminate, and Dazzle's Heal, they're going to get every camp. So, yep. The main downside is when you run an aggressive China, you really love to have supports that can smoke and roam on mid, which they could with Dazzle, but it's fairly weak. So, us farming, farming Alk means that they have a bit w worse of a of roam towards mid. So, mm -hmm. we'll see if that comes into play. But they should be able to shut down this Luna, and that's where you just look for Speed Gaming to make it up elsewhere. Pylai Dai can look to make it up offlane, maybe sets up an early kill mid. And Sing Sing should have a very good time. This is not a good matchup for Magnus at all. Yeah, Magnus is going to be uh, definitely struggling a bit. But I think Sing Sing could possibly be the big playmaker here because there's just so little lockdown for E-Hug. And that's where Storm Spirit really shines. When he doesn't have to go BKB first, he can go something a little bit more aggressive, maybe like an Orchid to start things off. And uh, we've yeah, seen... Orchid's really good versus Dazzle, yeah. and it's really good versus Magnus. Because Magnus, you always go like Arcane Blink. Uh, so getting a BKB is a long way off. Right. Top lane, Bone 7, though. He's going hard on Cakes here. This, I think, is our first blood. Cakes Oops. on the run, dropping fast. Bone 7's diving for it, and he's going to get it. They're going to go no! for it. Maybe not. He's going to get turned around the on. The plays, the magic stick. Oh. He had a few charges. Oh. 
I don't know how much Batrider Bone Seven's played lately. Maybe just you know, this wow. is where that damage nerf to him mm -hmm. uh, comes into play. That's if that's the old bat, that's an easy solo kill. But new bat just doesn't hit quite as hard. Yeah, very close call. Those wand charges for the win right there. Four stacks of sticky napalm, just not quite enough. So Ehug gonna find a small victory there to start things off, but already in this mid lane, Magnus five and zero against the eleven and one Storm Spirit. So needless to say, Sing Sing uh, performing as he should be and already getting the better of that mid lane. Cake still taking a lot of pressure up top as Bone Seven is going right back at it, but not gonna have enough to set up a kill. So gonna have to probably play it a little bit more defensive now that he's already conceded that first blood. Yeah, as for the mid lane right now, looking at the vision for the Storm Spirit, he has a decent war towards the bottom side of the map. So. They should be able to see supports rotating off the bottom lane, uh, and Pandago has made that move off the bottom lane. Now he's going to look to D ward, but there's not actually anything here for speed gaming towards the top side of the map. Yeah. Thing is, though, even if he didn't have ward, Saint Saint on the radiant side, you can just keep on farming the small camp whenever, or sorry, the medium camp whenever you're a bit worried about a gank. And in the lane, I mean, look, a 15 and one, just an easy matchup, and I don't think I'll get a solo kill here, but Ooh. you can see it's just this is not fun. This matchup sucks for Magnus, basically. Like, there's yeah. not a whole lot you can do about it. Yeah, uh, very unfortunate. And Sing Sing uh, <laughs> definitely performing well on that front. Dazzle in a little bit of trouble here. Does not have Shallow Grave. Two hit points. Oh, wow. That was about as close as they get LD. Aoi 2000 so close to securing a kill down here in the bottom lane. And almost punishing that greedy Dazzle build. Usually you want to grab that Shallow Grave earlier rather than later, just so you can prevent such nukes uh, yeah, like that. Yeah, he's only level 2, though. Like I, I, don't, yeah. I think it's, it's fairly common not to get it this early, but... This is going to be our, uh -oh. our second blood, I think. Yep, MSS in big trouble. Down he goes. Aoi 2000 going to grab that last hit. Yeah, then uh, Ehug, as soon as they rotate the Keeper of the Light off the lane, uh, the Radiant Ward did spot him moving towards mid, and speed just gets aggressive. They know it's a 2v2. Visage Luna versus Alk Dazzle, and Alk Dazzle, not really that scary anymore, especially with the new Alk stun and without early, a lot of levels early on. So yeah. this is where the Keeper of the Light pick, if you don't have a clear plan for him or... He's just kind of aimlessly roaming around. Like, if you had a Crystal Maiden here, much higher kill potential early on, and right. also more of a threat. So, like, Sing Sing maybe isn't so confident to, you know, push the lane past the river to be checking runes on his own, but when Keeper of the Light is the one support missing on the top side of the map, he gives no hoots. Yeah, and part of the other problem is Keeper of the Light isn't the best jungler. We see him here trying to kill this easy camp, but compared to someone like Crystal Maiden who can just move around the jungle, kill those hard camps quite easily, Kado just doesn't bring that same uh, level of solo jungling to the table. He's a good... Oh, there, there's another oh. dive top, and Cakes this time 10 stick charges should be fine again. And now Bone 7 going to retreat. A port does come in from Sheep, and uh, they won't pursue for a counter kill, but they will keep their Elder Titan alive. So the thing with Keeper of Light Jungle, I, I, I agree with you. It's He's not, he's not a, he's actually a fairly efficient jungler. It's just that he's a very passive one. Like if Keeper of the Light's jungling right. okay. efficiently, he does it either just like the standard way by pulling, but generally you want to stack the bait camp a lot and clear it, but that's going to take a few Illuminates and it, CM can just Frostbite a big creep, kill the big creep, attack. and then get level two really early and start going. And speaking of going, Ryuboras. Yep. He's I think in, he's... Yeah, Sing Sing's not level 6, so he's fine. Going to be able to skewer back, but uh, Sing Sing going to be 6 pretty quick here. Just another creep wave or so, and he's going to have that zip, and that's when things are going to start to get a little bit more difficult for E-Hug based on this start that Sing Sing has had. Number 1 on the net worth chart uh, by a fair margin, and Luna number 2. They've pretty much sacrificed this bottom lane, so Eternal Envy now is in free farm heaven, Dyer's very close to that level 6 mark as well. Attack. Yeah, once Envy hits 6, expect him to pick up a TP scroll. He may not use it early, but just having the ability to join a fight top uh, yeah. or mid if one develops is pretty big. He's one of the one of the most aggressive carries in terms of getting a, a TP early. Even though you'll often see his builds are greedy, uh, he really believes in joining the fights. And as Luna, uh, that is generally what you want to do. Join the fights early, right. push towers early, be a high impact hero in the laning stage, which so far, I mean, the thing is, when you're running a Luna carry, you normally expect to get tier 1s fast, but... I don't think you will against E-Hug unless you kill them. Just right. Tons of spam to stop pushes, whether it's the Astral Spirit, Illuminate, only level 1, but you see Pandago, AFK in the jungle now, and he'll just keep on stacking and firing the big camp, but again, it's like Storm doesn't care. He's, okay, great, I'll farm my jungle. You're right. Not you're not ganking me, so... Yeah, uh, everyone's kind of pulling a lane rotation here. We see Bat Rider did move into the jungle, hit level 6, went oh. ahead and grabbed his Tranquil Boots. They, they saw and... Sing Sing here. He had an oh. Invis where he popped it, and he walked up the hill, but Keeper of the Light was right there with an Observer, yeah. so... Sing Sing will spot the double stack, but it's not, like, the biggest thing to find. Uh, so, 
this is going to work out okay for E-Hug. Ryu Boars gets some far mid, and uh, the thing is, though, Keeper of the Light's not farming, so it's not a huge win for either team. Yeah, and Alchemist's farm is actually not that bad. Sitting about 2.1k, does not have any points in Grievel's Greed, so he is ready to fight if uh, the opportunity presents itself, and that moment may come pretty soon. Sing Sing, still invisible, the rune's about to expire, perhaps looking for an opening on the Dazzle, but not going to find it. And it looks like Singh will just rotate back towards the mid lane, but he may be able to bump into Pandago, he, Pandago here. Oh, he even saw Sing back. Sing earlier uh -oh. too, but he just oh, got a little greedy and no. he's going to pay for it. Yeah, that's going to be an easy kill. The zip forward, and one more ought to do it. Sing Sing going to grab his first kill of the match on the poor Keeper of the Light. He saw he saw him with the Observer Ward when he went to, well, he saw him when he went to place the Observer. He knew Sing Sing was off the map, and then the Invis had expired, but he didn't know where he was, so... That's where when you're like you're like keeper light, you just you need to wait until you see him back in the lane, and then you go to jungle. So just got a little greedy, and well, the thing is, giving storm kills like otherwise, Sing Sing wasted a good two minutes and did basically nothing with that invis, but instead gets a kill and goes right back to the bait or the, the jungle, and already has his treads, magic stick, null talisman, right. and orchid should be the next item here for Sing Sing. So he's having a really good start. He is your leader in terms of net worth. Yeah. And the one following him is Envy, so both cores off to a really fast start. Yep, and down bottom, they are going to start to pressure Envy a little bit, at least shove into that tower. Uh, I see Keeper of the Light harassing with those Illuminates, and uh, E actually pulling up that gold, perhaps considering attack. investing in a slightly later Midas. He did go Treads first, so not going to be that super fast Midas that Envy uh, does tend to go when he has a lot of farm. But Or can just go early Dominator. Yeah. Uh, we'll see, but both of them are good greed items, I would say. Yeah. Dominator doesn't delay your your mid game quite as much, uh, and it's a better uh, fairly fight item. But a bone seven in a bit of trouble. Yep, trying to grab that haste rune, but Ryu Borez gonna be able to pick it up. He won't pursue, and both of them uh, will kind of back up. Well, Ryu Borez actually not gonna back up. He is gonna look for an opening, perhaps onto the Luna. Of course, not gonna find it, and gonna be a bit of a, a wasted haste rune here. Magnus though does have his arcane boots up to go with that bottle, so he's at least got that first core item. And of course, we'll be pulling up for that Blink Dagger, looking for an opening here. Going to find Bone 7, but with that Firefly, we'll be able to move about to the high ground, the Skewer back, and that will be the end of it for now. Bone 7 now looking for an opening. He needs to be careful, though. He doesn't have any mana, no stick, no bottle charges, and Bone 7 going to pay for it, I think. Backside Illuminate Eclipse, gonna connect. Me. Oh, he well, didn't really around the back side. Here, he only got one Lucent Beam off of Pandago, but... It's oh, enough for the kill. Bone 7, already is going to fall to the Shockwave. Down goes the Keeper of the Light. That's going to make it a one for one. Pylai die in no man's land. And, oh, pardon me. Oh, he's with Eternal Envy. Look at this tunnel vision. They're going to be able to finish off Ryu Borez. Hopefully. No, they're going to be able to turn it around onto he the could, Luna. He's got a Shockwave. He one might be able to get two kills here. One more. Oh, <laughs> play his triple kill. That should not have happened. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Envy just ran right into the RP. He could have just stayed back and kind of kited him a bit, but underestimated Magnus's damage output. Wow. Yeah, that that really comes, uh, as we see, Sing Sing gets a, a solo kill on Cake's bottom lane, but yeah. uh, that really just comes down to Envy whiffing his Eclipse. He got one loose and beam off uh, that actually hit an enemy hero, and it looked like it would yeah. turn out well anyway with a really good fissure from Pi, but... Yeah, you just you don't want to run next to Magnus when he still has RP. Just under underestimate attack. the Magnus damage output and... yeah. Is the price Absolutely. big turner? That's a huge turnaround for Ehug after what? Because it just looked like a total disaster, and instead turns out to be a decent trade for them in the end. Mm -hmm. and it makes a little dent in that golden experience graph, but Sing Sing is still number one on the net worth chart. That kill that I uh, didn't catch on camera while that was happening. I'm uh, gonna further Sing Sing's farm a little bit, and uh, I have a feeling he's gonna go that orchid first. He's pulling up that gold a little bit now that he's yeah, got if, if you the go, power treads. It's either BKB or orchid. Uh, yeah, we don't really see Bloodstone Belt at all anymore, and yeah. Orchid, to me, is just the much stronger pickup this game. Like, sure, there's some stuns you want to dodge, but this Storm is their primary tempo controller along with the Bat, but Bone 7 isn't having the fastest start. He'll have a blank uh, fairly soon. But if you get an Orchid on Storm, you can just go solo kill Connell with ease. You can... Uh, 560 health, that's like... <laughs> as we see the Midas come out for Envy, so you were right. He is going for uh, a very greedier a greedier build this game, I should say. But yeah, yeah, you can solo kill Connell with ease. Dazzle especially it's strong against because you can't grave somebody when you jump in. Mm -hmm. And Magnus, it really disrupts the team fight when he can't RP. So I think Orchid first is the way to go here. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense as well. Now I worry a little bit about this carry Alchemist uh, up against the farm of Eternal Envy because now we see a Midas versus none and he still doesn't have a single point in Grievel's Greed even though he is sitting level 8. So Alchemist Farm, although it's not bad right now, I think Envy is going to start to take over on the charts. But we'll hold that thought as Ryu Borez is going to be pursued by the Bat Rider. They have three coming here. They they really yeah. want to fight this, but this is just space creation from Bone7 while they're actually smoke ganking top. 
Yep, and that's exactly what they're going to do is they rotate. But good good map awareness from MSS. He is a little bit suspicious. <laughs> Trickery if, is afoot. Yeah, if you look at the E-Hug vision right now, they don't see anybody mid. Uh, although, he's going to get caught anyway. He's trying oh. to make a run for it. He was playing it so well, and he pokes out just a bit too far forward, and or too far backwards, I guess, behind the tower, and they're going to be able to converge. Sing going to grab yet another kill. That's going to make Sing now 3-0-0 here in 12 minutes. So uh, this Storm Spirit really off to a solid start. Yeah, he's snowballing hard, and he's snowballing hard against very poor supports. Tranquil Boots only on Keeper of the Light. Dazzle with basic brown boots, only level 5. They're going to be food in the mid game. And the Magnus having an okay time, Ryuboras, like, despite the triple kill, his CS wasn't the best in lane because of the matchup, so only Dyer's 41 right. CS at 12 minutes, attack. about 3 a minute. So, even after he gets blink, he still has to Radiant's always worry about the Storm Orchids. So that's where attack. he maybe needs to be smoked up behind his team, just not in, in the fog where the, the Storm can't see him, because if you're that Storm, you're always going for either him or Radiant's the Dazzle in the team fights, and right. getting either one is a pretty Radiant's big loss early on for you. Looks like we could see a little bit of tower trading down in the bottom. Ehug trying to pressure that tier 1 tower. Glyph was used by speed, and they are going to pose a defense Dyer's here. See Earthshaker trying to position for perhaps a good Fissure block. Ryu yeah, going to find the Luna. They but might go on this Sing Sing. Not going to pursue. No. Yep. Eternal Envy does have There's an ultimate five. available There's here. There's five here for Ehug. Yeah. But now they want to go in. They're going to plop a ward down, and they will spot Dyer's a few in the woods. And up top, Visage going to be able no, to no, take no, out a tower. Lane. They went right oh, out of they it's caught the Dazzle. Go. Oh, no. This is a disaster for Ehug. They've already lost a tower top. They will grab a kill on Sing Sing to make it a one for one. But if this is an even trade, Speed's still going to find the better of it. And there is still Eclipse and Eclipse available. Yeah. Howie, still Eclip not with Eclipse him, and Eclipse, indeed. And Eclipse. Yeah, <laughs> eclipse and Lots eclipse. of Eclipses available here. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh Ryu Borez. Whoa, he's going to get Eclipse to the face, and that is going to be a dead Magnus, maybe getting a bit overzealous there. They he saw him with this Observer Ward in the woods, and I think he's like, oh, they don't know I'm coming. I can make a huge play. He got the triple kill earlier, just trying too hard to make a play. And yeah. Unfortunately, AUI is not even here. He's split pushing top. And he's going to start. A, that's a really bad fight. Well, they yeah. did kill the Storm. It's not really bad, but it's pretty bad because it, yeah. Speed Gaming farming two lanes, getting a one for one trade, and. Uh, oh, that was a one for two. They killed the Dazzle. Oh, yeah, one for two. One so. for two and the top tier one yeah. tower. Speed. Despite they, getting the Storm, it's it's not a good trade. Yeah, they're, they're cruising ahead. So Blink Dagger is up on the bat. At this point, Bone 7 can go for ganks, but mostly just needs to farm the four staff because when you jump in on E Hug, you really want to get out quickly. Uh, if you jump in and they out stun you, you're probably just going to die. So with four staff, you could jump in, grab somebody, and bring them back for an easy kill. Right. Uh, just the threat of the bat gank is often enough of a deterrent to let your team win in the AFK farm. And that's one of the reasons why we see Storm as a really popular pick nowadays is he farms well and he's a bigger threat to gank than most other carries. So you've got to play defensively. And if you look at E-Hug right now, they're not even in lanes at this attack. point. Despite having five alive, they're hugging tier one mid. They're hugging the bottom tower. They're just n getting nothing off the map compared to speed. Yeah, and, th and that kill on Magnus was particularly well-timed because he's close to that blink. If he hadn't died down there, he'd probably have it right now or be damn close. He's about a 250 off at the moment. So that is going to slow down the teamfight potential of E-Hug as they are going to start to rotate towards the top lane. Sing Sing needs to be a little careful here. Perhaps they're going to try and set up onto the Visage. But I think Speed Gaming will be ready to deal with towards it. Top. They, yeah. they have... Uh, the makings of the four staff on bone seven, but they can force a big fight mid. And how does Ehug defend this? They really attack. have to approach the tower Radiant's as five, or they're just going to feed. Yep, and oh, Ryu Borez almost getting caught by the Bat Rider, looking for a lasso. Looks like he does have his sights set up on that top lane. And of course, Cakes is sitting there. All the while, Luna going to be able to finish off that tier one tower in the mid, and down bottom, Ehug going to be able to grab that tier one. So some tower exchanging across the map, but speed still going to be ahead two to one in total tower count. And the Blink's up on Mag. This is your ideal time to fight, but it's hard to go in against the Speed Gaming lineup. They've got a lot of ways to counter-initiate. If you jump in, you can get lassoed, fissured, loose and beamed. Storm can evade the Blink fairly easily. So the RPs are going to be big for this team. Without a big RP, these ca these heroes are just too hard to lock down, particularly the Storm and the Bat. You're going to have a hard time winning the fight without at least, I'd say, a 2-3 hero RP. Mm -hmm. And also they get a Shadow Blade from SS. So I like this timing a lot for Ehug to force fight. Sing Sing doesn't have Orchid yet. They don't have a BKB on Envy. He's gone Ultra Greed Mode, Midas into Dominator. 
<laughs> but if left unchecked, he will outfarm an Alk with one point in Grievel's Greed at 60 minutes. So right. basically, E Hug, they're on the clock right now. I mean, he's already out farming that Alchemist, hitting about 7k on net worth compared to the 5k of Alchemist. Already a pretty large disparity, as you mentioned. Only one point in Grievel's Greed, and that was a level 9 point, so it's not like he's had it for a while, racking up that gold. They're going and here we go, mid. The RP going to be used on Bone7. He's going to get skewered back. They're going to be able to grab a pretty easy kill here. A 1v5, or a 4v5, rather. And um, well, One here RP, it's okay, but they just don't push towers that hard on E-Hug. Like... Yes. They don't have familiars, they don't have a necro book, there's no Pugnum, there's no Dragonite. So when you only get a one hero RP, speed gaming just they just want to defend a turtle while they split push the other side of the map and that's what AUI is doing. He is one of the more aggressive, like split pushing like it's where AUI is not really a true four position support. He's much more of like a three and a half, three position support <laughs> player, and this is a classic example of where that's the stronger way to play is this game where right. uh, you lose a hero mid, just push attack. top and you draw them back and and RP, in exchange for everyone else on speed farming their own jungle, it's not a bad trade for E-Hug, but it's just not like a clear win the way it would be in other games. Right, and Sing Sing actually has a haste rune bottled up right now, so they may be able to find their initiation utilizing uh, this rune that well, may go to Sing Sing's head, as Merlini says, the god rune sometimes, as uh, yeah. you feel unkillable, and uh, every so often you get a dose of your own medicine, but Sing Sing just going to pop it and go back it, to It farming. really is. It's like when yeah. you, when, <laughs> whenever, it's the funniest thing is when you see someone get a haste at level, it's particularly at level one, where you're like, oh, I'm level one, they can't kill me, and then the Crystal Mana runs up two hills into a waiting Alk stun, Visage yeah. is sitting there, and just freaking gets melted instantly. So. <laughs> it's okay. I can run away, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe. So, <laughs> so I'm curious to see what Envy goes for now. Uh, I was going to say two main choices are BKB and Yasha. And there's the, the Yasha. The Yasha is in some ways risky. If you are forced to team fight, obviously you want BKB. But if you aren't forced to team fight, you get so far ahead from this item pickup. And I mean, look at the Ancients right now. Ehug have not managed to deward them. Uh, or to keep them warded, so they will be stacked. They have stacked their own. I'm not sure if Speed have spotted this yet, because Visage has been parked top, but as soon as AUI rotates towards the bottom side of the map, he's probably going to see it, and it will a lot of how the economic side of this game develops. It's a big lead for Speed Gaming now. If they manage to jack the enemy Ancients, or if it goes the other way, it could turn a bit, but right. uh, they are going to look to kill them now, and with Empower, they right. should be able to bring these down, so... Eho yeah. getting their ancients, but it's still only level two Grievel's greed. One position out. I, I would have liked to see an earlier point, and oh, he almost died. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little close for comfort. I agree. Uh, I mean, that, those early points in acid spray are great, but if you're relying on this out to carry you into the late game against a Luna who's really had free reign of the map, I think Grievel's greed is almost a necessity to get some of those early. And points he was he wasn't it. contested. Like there was the bat was in the lane a little bit, yeah. but largely this Alk was just on his own top lane once they rotated. Once they had, like, a sort of abandoned bot and moved MSS yeah. over top. And they were expecting to go for some early kills, but Speed Gaming just kind of avoided the tri lane. And that's where, as a carry player, you just have to d make the adjustment of, okay, we, we're not going to be able to pick fights early, so I know Envy is a greedy carry player. I have to match him, or we're just going to fall behind. And that's right. what's happened. Orchid's up on Sing Sing. Envy, BKB probably his next choice after the Manta. It's a strong item this game, just for, like, the Alk stun and some of the magic damage. So, right. I think BKB is worthwhile, but if he wants to go full full speed gaming, he may just skip it entirely. Well, Aoi 2000 is the big breadwinner here. He is just about at that Ag Scepter, and he actually has enough gold for it now. So that's going to be another familiar on the field. He's also level 11, so he has been uh, spending a lot of time in lane, and that farm is really Double starting damage. to show right in the middle of the pack and pulling ahead of the other supports in the game by a really large margin, especially the Earthshaker and the Dazzle getting tripled by the farm of the Visage. <laughs> he was just, like, they were fighting, defending mid. Remember, they got that solo RP kill, and then he was just farming top the entire time. And he was there for a good three, four, five minutes before that. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, Speed Gaming did make a move towards the enemy Ancients, dropped a sentry here. Uh, Ehug did manage to clear them, so that was a nice pickup for them. Still, though, gold is stable. About a 5k gold lead for Speed Gaming. And at this point, Speed basically will pick fights when they're suitable, and when they're not, they'll just split push. Their team fight is not amazing, but with good... With a good uh -oh. pick off, they can win the fight. Nice fissure to start things now. off. And here we go. Bone 7 going to hop forward. He's going to grab himself, or grab Pandago. He does have the mech, though. Going to be able to survive the initial assault. Now MSS going to go in, and he's going to get obliterated. The rest of the team going to follow suit. But whoa, Magnus going to come in with a huge RP. And Speed Gaming going to make it a 3 for 3 exchange. Luna still alive, though. 
they are going to pursue on the cakes, but what an RP right there. Yeah, that looked like a complete train wreck. They lost, the Kato was forced to mech himself, died immediately, but it still might turn out to be one because cakes is going down. He is four for three, and Envy didn't die in that fight. Completed Manta, I believe, on the way. Yes, it is. God, he's fat. Yeah. He picked up a lot of kills there in that fight, so a fairly even exchange at face value, but the important hero on speed got a lot of farm out of that, and as you mentioned, he didn't die. Also, a huge amount of experience. Look at the hero levels. Envy is 15. Next highest is going to be Magnus at 13. That is huge. This is the power of greed Dota when it's, not, when it's left unchecked and the enemy team doesn't also go greedy. E-Hug, they went for early combat items, and they focused a lot on like the mid-game fights, but they just haven't found enough fights. 22 minutes in, they only have 9 kills. Like, ideally, the tempo of this game for E-Hug should be that there's, Dyer's like, you know, 20 kills blocked. on each team or something at this point. That would be more to their, uh, it would suit the way they've itemized and played denied. it out. But at this point, well, there's a gem up on the Batrider. And yeah. this is the power of the Blink Force initiation. You tried Siege of Tower, well, one hero gets caught, that's your mech down, team fight goes poorly, and... By the way, the familiars for AUI did a lot of work. This Alka is not tanky at all. Like, he's going BKB, but... With a medallion and triple familiars, he just melts. Just yep. melts. We saw it in that fight. He was the first to run in after uh, Coddle got caught, and he basically got melted and had to about face straight away. And then it was only until that RP came that Ehug was able to try and turn it around. Alchemist was really not a big playmaker in that fight because, well, what could he have done? He's just so squishy. Even once he gets BKB, he's still going to be squishy. Like, it's a game where you need... Oh, bottom lane. Yep. Ryubora is. Ryubor is in big trouble. Bone 7 going to find a good initiation. A follow-up going to be there, and Envy going to grab another kill. I'm actually not sure what he was doing there, because he can't solo kill Envy. His, uh, maybe they were trying to smoke behind him, but they weren't even remotely nearby. And the thing is, every time you give up a kill like that, Speed Gaming had a lot of free farm. Mm -hmm. Like, some lineups you give up a kill, not a big deal, but when they've gone ultra green mode on a really strong split pushing dual core lineup that farms really well, even the supports like Visage farm well, uh, yeah. it economically hurts you a lot more than giving up a kill in other games does. So, mm -hmm. it's it's tough for them now. You go sh early Shadow Blade, you have a blink on Mag as your solo mid. You want to be taking fights, but Speed are just, they're the masters of evasion. I mean, they really live up to their names, I already. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't want to fight. They they. It seems like they always find ways to avoid the fights or just get decent trades out of it. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And one interesting uh, aspect of this B gaming itemization is they actually don't have a mech, so they've been doing well in these team fights uh, despite not having a mech. And of course, Coddle has his. So that is uh, a disparity that should be in favor of Ehug, but still they just don't have the skills to pay the bills Dyer's it seems top tower yeah is under attack. even though they're farming Dyer's ancients with a fairly farmed alchemist it's just not enough alk is not going to out carry a storm luna unless they have a godly rp if they do they can easily win the fight but yeah. hard to hit a godly rp against such a mobile lineup luna even though she doesn't have like a, a blink or anything is very fast Four at move speed and manta style yeah if you're if you're timely you could even dodge the rp with the manta so <laughs> Uh, yeah. Potentially potentially really hard to get. And even Bat's elusive, so uh -oh. good luck getting that 5 hero RP that you desperately need. Owie maybe in a little bit of trouble up here. He's been putting a lot of pressure on this tower. Almost a full duration. Alk stun going to come out, and I think this will be the end of the Visage. They will converge on him, and finally going to pressure that Visage. And he actually was almost able to take out that top tier 2 tower. He was able to force out the Glyph by himself. So a much needed kill for Ehug right there. Finally going to check that undead flying bird. Yeah, speed, it's just the same story. When they give up a kill, they, they get other stuff off the map. Bone 7 was dewarding mid. He got one observer there. Now he gets another observer bottom. And the vision for E-Hug, they have two wards both protecting, like, the main entrance to their jungle once the tier 1 mid down is down, which it is. But, you know, they still can't safely farm this area of the jungle mm -hmm. because they have no vision if someone's coming in from the top lane. Their ancients aren't warded off at all, and thus Sing Sing is a huge threat, and he might find a kill here as well. Yeah, actually has a haste rune on as well, but they are going to take the more passive route, and they will back up. Going to scout out the Roche Pit. Ali continuing to be very active with those familiars. And, oh, it looks like E-Hug may get scouted out. They're going to start to converge around the Roche Pit as well. Perhaps they're thinking that speed are in the pit. Sort of an awkward positioning. They're stationed about it, but they're still not very grouped up. Yeah, they, right, they're like one item away on Envy from actually just forcing the fights, I think. Yeah. At that point, he probably won't die. If they go on Envy, they have a lot of ways to counter-initiate. The familiar stuns and Fissure being the two main ones. Mm -hmm. uh, they may want to wait for the ES Blink before that, but in the meantime, 
they've got a good lineup to prevent a, a, like a Roche sneak. Really good lineup for that. Batrider with Firefly. You can scout the Roche pit with uh, the Storm Remnants. They give you a small amount of flying vision and AoE around them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, familiar. So you're not sneaky Roche against speed unless they just get sloppy. Right. And that means they, they know if you're roaching, and then in the meantime, they can just split push and outfarm you. And that's pretty much just what they're going to keep on doing until yeah. E-Hug forces a fight. But yeah. how can they? I well, don't know. It's tough. Envy now has enough to just right-click that BKB if that's the item he wants to go Dyer's for next. Top but top. I don't think he's going to... Like, at this point, I think he's just going to keep on going... Satanic. You know, he's got yeah, the recipe. Like straight, wow. straight Satanic. It's not Dyer's bad, this game, either. Yeah. I mean, I don't... BKB is not always the better choice. It's just the safer choice because it allows you to fight if you need to. If your team screws up, going the like greedier build is more, you know, we're not going to make mistakes. We're going to outmaneuver you around the map, and then we'll we'll reap the whirlwinds later on when we're just even farther ahead. Mm -hmm. And they may fight now with the satanic. And I think the main thing is they just want the Earthshaker blink, and they just got it. Yeah, I was just going to say blink up on the Earthshaker. Still actually not in the inventory. It's sitting in the bank waiting for use of the courier. But once they grab that. I can't think of much else that Speed would want to be waiting for to take a team fight. Just look at the map control right now. E-Hug restricted to a quarter of the map. Mm -hmm. And Speed, if you just toggle like the vision F2, F3, it's literally like three quarters of the map that <laughs> Speed controls to one quarter of the map that E-Hug controls. They're just, yeah. they're just getting starved at this point. Yep, and we see that disparity on the net worth chart just continuing to grow. Alchemist still in the number two slot, but Eternal Envy's farm is just vastly superior. Alchemist finally leveling up that Grievel's Greed, and he does now have a BKB as well as a Plate Mail, probably working towards the it's, Assault Karas. It's really under... BKB is really underwhelming, though, just because they have so much damage. Visage with Medallion and Ag Scepter, so much physical damage, mm -hmm. and the Luna Aura. Plus, this Luna is going to go Butterfly next, so... Yeah. Like, the BKB is essential because there's a lot of good physical lock... or uh, magical lockdown and, and nukes from speed, but... Like I said earlier, it's just the starting point. He really needs like AC and Abyssal and maybe the makings of his next item to be in a good position. But at this point, by the time he gets six-slotted, Envy will be six-slotted with buyback boots of travel. <laughs> yeah. And maybe an Aegis as well. Yeah. So, e so it's not good. Looking for an opening here, they did just use a smoke in their jungle. We see actually Dazzle still smoked up, but unable to find any sort of an opening to actually engage. Owie going to back up and resummon his familiars here, so not going to hand over any free gold. Rod, Rod of Owie. Rod of Owie. Well, this, one, this one's over, is. folks. You can book it now. 100% <laughs> win rate. Uh, I wonder what his win rate is on that item compared to other players. Now, that's an interesting where, statistic. Where's Brian when we need K-pop Toastus, Toastus, I know you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> he actually wanted to do stats, but we're, we're saving him for a rainy day. We, yeah. we, got, we got him at work, uh, working on the studio downstairs. So there, there's plenty of other construction work that needs doing yeah, still. He's... So. he's he, <laughs> As we found out since uh, he moved in, Brian actually grew up on a farm, uh, and he... He's eager he, to like, use a hammer. This, this, he, yeah, he's <laughs> eager to use a hammer, is exactly right. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it. He, he was building barns when he was like eight years old, so uh, we, we found ourselves, uh, in addition to a statsman, a, a well-oiled engineer. A chef, be. a hard worker, a problem solver. Yeah, he's and really he's got a, a southern accent, Jack too, of all so. trades. Yeah. This a a toggleable southern accent at that. Toggle. <laughs> Or so he claims. <laughs> I always hear it. But, uh, uh, yeah, Envy, he completed the Satanic three minutes ago, maybe four. Uh, three and a half, I think, about. And he's got 4.5k. Yeah. So he's farming a tier four item every five to six minutes. Yeah, he's out This of is efficiency at his finest. Alk has Grievel's Greed. Luna has Midas. You will get more gold out of Grievel's Greed if you're farming the map mm -hmm. better. But he's just not. Envy yeah. is ridiculously far ahead. 650 gold per minute Dyer's on Luna. That's not too shabby for the 30 attack. minute mark. That is pretty damn impressive. They're going to be able to A move soon. Like Speed Gaming, they <laughs> can just A, A, press 1, press A, right click the enemy base, and, and you're not going to lose. Is there a shirt for that? 1A, 2A, 3A? Yeah, there's only Victory. one. You just, <laughs> this is just the 1A strat. When you're so big, you don't even have to have multiple control groups. Just Yeah. And I mean, we're talking about Envy, but you know, Sing Sing quietly farming towards the Lincoln Sphere. AUI 2000 is, in his own right, probably, sh I'd say, as strong as the Alk in the team fights. Mm -hmm. uh, and even and the thing is, even if he dies, the Familiar still can do a lot of work. So, yeah. uh, E-Hug gets a big RP, or, or they lose, pretty much. And yeah. Well, Assault... They, speed Gaming should not get caught by RP. They're one of the best lineups to avoid it. Yeah. Well, at least Assault Karas is up on the Alchemist, so that's a step in the right direction. His farm is getting a little bit better, but I worry about that HP buffer. He really doesn't have too much in the way of stats, even though Chemical Rage is great for the regeneration. If you can't survive the burst, then the regen really doesn't help you too much. 
Well, they keep on roaming as a pack. That's like they're kind of hoping speed will come to them, but speed. Well, they'll farm until they're good and ready, man. Like yeah. this, this team is not afraid to to make sure that it's impossible to lose before they go. Wait, we were talking about vision before. It's even worse now. Literally no wards down on the map except sentries. Bat, Bat Rider with a right gem. Now. Like you, you yeah, can't. Keep, there's if you don't kill him, you will not keep vision up. And Bone Seven has. He's basically turned into a mobile D-Ward. He hasn't been farming much lately. He's just been constantly D-Warding the map. And there's the butterfly on Luna, in case you were wondering what he's been up to. He can. He's still got some room to grow here. Yeah, he can sell little. the Midas. I can sell the Midas. He can get Boots of Travel. So he actually has two more item slots. Probably save one for the Aegis. And then... And get, like, a Daedalus next. Maybe an MKB. Yeah. But, yeah, pretty much he's maxed. I mean, he can farm more, but... Yeah. He doesn't need to, and, and he's ready. Yep, there we go. The Both teams are smoking. The smoke from Speed, the smoke from E-Hug, and they may meet in the jungle. Oh, E-Hug might e find the initiation. Are they going to get the RP? They still haven't revealed the smoke, so they don't know. They're revealed now, and there's uh -oh. a Radiant Observer Ward. This Coddle's going to be spotted. Uh -oh. Now Speed, no. Uh-oh, and they're going to go straight for it. Pylai Die actually going to whiff the Enchant Totem, but Pandago going to be in big trouble. He is going to get Grave to start things off. There's the Bat Rider Lasso going to pull him way out of the battle. Luna going to be able to finish off the Dazzle. Cake's going to be taking a lot of damage as well. Alchemist going to pop the BKB. He's chopping that wood. The RP comes in. He's got Satanic. Oh, no, he didn't die. Oh, it's not going to be enough. A close call, but he will be able to Satanic at the last second. Pandago, the last one alive, but it's going to be a 5 for nil. Clean sweep. Speed Gaming going to come out way ahead. Triple kill for the Luna. I got, even though Speed just team wiped them, I got to give Ryu Boris a lot of credit because that bat did everything he could to keep him out of the fight, and he still managed to get a massive <laughs> RP, almost killed Envy. I think they still would have lost the fight, but, man, close. Envy's just too farmed at this point. Like, yeah. If you don't kill him, he comes right back to full HP. But Ryu Boris, for me, standout player for E-Hug this game, and uh, he's been a rising talent for some time. We first saw him back in MLG's wholesale, I think, on the... You know, sort of the larger stage, Dyer's if you will, and I'm looking forward to see more of him. Despite yeah. E-Hug losing, we've seen some really good individual play from him. Uh, I think where they really struggled was just some of like the overall team strategy. Like Alk, Dyer's if you're going to trade free farm against fortified. Envy on Luna, you know he's going to go greedy. You yeah. either have to go greedy as well, or you have to find a way to punish them in the lanes. And this Keeper of the Light pick just did not work out. Yeah. Ro roamed around a lot, we ended up being food for the Storm most of the game. Yeah. Uh, and just when you're up against the Storm mid, uh, and you don't have a support who can potentially gank him, it just frees the storm up to play cocky to get all the runes and and not and also you have no chance of actually killing them, which doesn't help either. Yeah, speed gaming just going to continue putting pressure on forward. Now, if forward comes Sing Sing, Cake's going to get the shallow grave. No They're RP just going to switch targets. Yeah, without the RP, it's going to be rough. Down goes Ryu Borez. MSS probably going to be the next target as he gets nuked by Owie. And it's just a massacre here in the E-Hug base. There's the Eclipse coming out from Eternal Envy. Oh, no, it's still on cooldown. I guess it was just a Lucent Beam. Anyhow, the GG well played. It's another 5 for nil. Clean sweep. Speed looking in good form here, LD. They, they're cruising. And they're cruising. Pedal to the metal. I felt like Speed wasn't really in top form at the start of this game. Uh, Pylai Die was a little bit... I wouldn't say aimless with his roaming, but was kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, Sing Sing did really well in, in the mid lane, but that's a matchup he should stomp. And where they really excel was in the mid game decision making. Like they always knew when to fight, knew when to avoid fights, and uh, were just very efficient mm -hmm. with their movement and time. So right when it's all said and done, speed move on, and they will be playing uh, sad, boys. sad boys. So we're gonna have a sad boy speed showdown. An interesting best of three. Yeah. Any who's, uh, your, who's your rares on? That's a good one. question. I mean, I want to say speed because they have that long standing. I mean, MLG Columbus champions are hard to bet yeah. against, but Sad Boys look good in that best of one. So it should be an interesting best of three. And then, of course, we'll have that best of one right. for the losers to figure, uh, figure out who's going home. Hmm. I. I'm not sure. Rock's Kiss versus E Hug? Uh, Rock's Kiss versus E Hug. I don't know. A lot of it may come down to server. I hate to say it, but it's a best of one, and yeah. we are coin flipping for server. The loser does get first pick and choice, of, or sorry, choice of pick and choice of side. Everyone pretty much picks uh, first pick. Mm -hmm. Some teams have been going for radiant, some for right. dire, but I think that one might just come down to server. Uh, if it was even in terms of server, I would give Rock's Kiss the edge. Uh, although they aren't playing with Goblack today, and that did seem to hurt them. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Goblack's normally their drafter as well. Yeah. So that is sort of a double whammy of having someone missing. But they're definitely the more experienced and uh, more proven team of the two. So they should right. be the favorites, if not uh, guaranteed to advance. But coming Absolutely. up next, it's going to be Speed versus Sad Boys. Sad Boys, best of three. So stay tuned, guys. Plenty more Dota coming your way here in the Beyond the Summit. Studio work in progress.